Hello, and welcome to mmlearn.org, a program of Morningside Ministries. I'm Maria Wellish, and I'm going to spend a few minutes with you today talking about what it's like to be employed full-time or part-time with someone and caring for an aging or a loved one at home. This is really a difficult problem that puts tremendous stress on you and we want to talk to you about how to ease some of this and also what is um, what's available for you. So the first thing is is that I've realized that people don't even understand that they're a caregiver. Um, until it's a full-time job and you're staying home full-time to take care of a loved one, um, you just don't recognize that you're a caregiver. And I've seen this time after time with people that I work with, and I work in the healthcare field, that when I'll ask them if they're a caregiver, they'll say no, but they answer almost yes to everything on the list that I'm going to go over with you in just a second. So let's start and answer some of these questions. Do you stop by your parents or family member's home frequently just to see how they're doing? Is it one time a week or is it every day? Is it sometimes multiple times a day that you have to go by? If you're answering yes to this question, you're a caregiver. Do you make and provide transportation to doctor's appointments? It doesn't mean that you do it every time, but are you doing it most of the time for the family member to be there with them? You're a caregiver. Do you pick up and refill prescriptions? How about filling medication boxes for people so the family members so that they can take their meds? Do you do the grocery shopping for your family member? Does your loved one call you throughout the day at work? Even if it's just one, two, or three times, this is a disruption in your work pattern that others may be noticing and resenting, to be honest with you. Do you call your loved one once, more, once or more than once a day from the office? Um, this is really um, important to understand that this does put you in the category of caregiving because it increases your stress. And we'll talk about stress in a few minutes. Guilty or not? Well, have you skipped your own doctor's appointment because you feel you have missed too much work? When was your last mammogram and pap smear? Have you turned down a promotion because you knew that you just couldn't meet the requirements of the job? Are you considering cutting down to part-time or quitting your job totally? These are questions that you need to ask yourself because sometimes the job may be what saves you and in other times not. Have you talked with your boss before they have talked to you? Do you think that your boss cares that you're a family caregiver? We are really working hard to make industry aware of how important their employees are to them. And when we are in this generation, this baby boomer generation, we are going to have almost 100% of our uh, workers that are in industry working caring for someone at home. And that doesn't mean staying home all day, but it means they're trying to juggle the workplace and caring for their loved one. You are not alone. That's one of the most important things that you need to know, just by the statistics, because more than one in six American workers are also caregivers at home, and they don't even recognize that they're caregiving. They're cleaning their mother's house on Saturday and cleaning their own home, and they're exhausted, and they'll still not say they're a caregiver because it's my mom, or it's my dad, or it's my aunt, or this is what my family does. 28% of those that are caring for aging parents, relatives, or a friend report that their employers are unaware of their caregiving status. And I know for a fact where I work that is true that so many times I'll start talking to somebody that works for me and it turns out what they're handling at home. And it's not just for an adult. Sometimes it's for their grandchildren, that they have become the parent to the grandchildren. They are a caregiver, getting them to school, going to the parent-teacher meetings. I'm not going to say anything about what's up with their parents, but we're seeing more and more seniors caring for their grandchildren. And that indeed makes you a caregiver. 
You need to know that employers are recognizing the impact of this issue, and it is big. They, call, they talk about presenteeism and absenteeism. Presenteeism means you showed up for work, but your head isn't really there. It's really worrying about mom or dad. Did they make it to the doctors? Uh, what did the doctor say? Were they able to pick up their medicines? Um, did they remember to get something refilled? Their head is not in their work. Absenteeism is actually when you're leaving work to go handle an issue with your family. And do you take the whole day or a part day or a few hours? How disruptive is it? The cost of replacing an employee is enormous. Um, there is a financial cost and there's an efficiency cost. And turnover is huge. Um, I have statistics in another program that I'll be presenting on what it actually costs an employer to turn over most caregivers, or anyone for, in that, for that matter as a turnover. And um, there's also an impact on insurance for an organization when they have a large volume of caregivers. And you might be thinking, well, what does that mean? When you're a caregiver, you're under incredible stress. What does that mean? You've got higher blood pressure, your diabetes may not be taken care of, you may not be exercising, you may be grabbing food at McDonald's or Burger King or somewhere else on your way home and your nutrition is really terrible, you're not getting enough sleep, which is very hard on the body, and you're not even going to your own doctor to get treatment or help for this. Well, when insurance companies, when you do go to the doctor or something megaly happens, a heart attack or something else like that or a stroke, at that point, because you weren't monitoring your blood pressure and they have a lot of claims for a year, their rates go up. And so, yes, employers are giving a lot more recognition of this. And we're even seeing a tremendous willingness to try to help their employees. And you might think, well, not my employer, but I hope that you'll go through this with me and maybe get some new ideas. First of all, you have to know what your rights are. And the Family Medical Leave Act, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, and I'm not a human resource specialist, but Family Medical Leave allows you to take time off to take care of a loved one if necessary. And we always think of FMLA as being all at one stretch, like you have to do it all in 12 weeks. That's not true. FMLA can be divided and you can use your hours for FMLA if you've worked for an organization for a year or more, broken up into short time spans. So say that you just need to be able to be free three times a week to take your mom for a certain appointment or once a month or whatever it is, you don't have to take all those hours. It can be done by hours, not just by days. And that's really important to get with your human resource department and understand or go on the internet to understand what your rights are under the Family Medical Leave Act. Every state has different rules and regs, not in regard to the, the Family Medical Leave Act, but according to what they allow and what they don't allow in uh, caregiving or um, especially financially. There are some that have subsidies if you provide the caregiving because it saves money for the state. And so they actually pay you uh, if somebody from you or your family is staying home to take care of a loved one. It's important to look into and find out what are all those resources that are available to you. Does your company have an EAP? Most people don't even know what EAP stands for. It's an Employee Assistance Program. It's usually part of their benefit package. You get so many appointments and then you can get them at a reduced rate and they are incredibly helpful in situations of family caregiving. There's also something called a geriatric case manager. It can cost you a little bit of money, but in the end, save you a ton because it saves your job. And these are things that I want to suggest to you that we will spend time getting into so that you will know what it is that's available to you that can help you keep your job and save your sanity. As